Hello guys, it's Afrorab 2 cg here, and today I'm bringing you guys a new video on my channel. I know my channel's been dead for a while, but I wanted to start doing these future sets, reviews of what's coming out, and what are the top cards, and cards that I'm interested in, what's going to be in the meta. So let's start off with Greninja GX. Greninja GX, Shuriken Fury. When you play this uh, Pokemon from your hand to evolve, one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may put three damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon. That's good. It's a nice the de evolution, re evolution trick so you can easily switch around your Greninja so when one gets too weak, he can flip it back and still adding damage onto your opponent. Three damage won't, doesn't seem much, but if someone built a Gengar Greninja build, that 30 damage means a lot. If you guys don't know, Creepshow Gengar, I'll put it up in the video. If you have 30 damage on it, Creepshow automatically knocks you out. Doesn't care how much HP you have, it, it's an auto knockout. So that's a good combo deck right there. Haze Slash. You may shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached into your deck. 110, 140 if you have a choice man on it. Like I was saying with the switching out, this deck is just to maintain taking damage while switching out Greninjas. It's kind of like a Lissapod, but a few more steps. Because you have to go through Froakie, Frogadier, and then to Greninja. Shadow Hunter GX. Oh, Shadow Leaf Hunter. My bad. This attack does 130 damage to, your to one of your opponent's bench from Pokemon. Do not apply weakness or resistance. That's not bad. It's a nice 130 damage. The card itself is really good. It's possibly going to take, I would say, top four decks in the meta right now. With Buzzwold, Galissapod, and Zork. And obviously it's a GX attack. It's a GX Mon. So it has... To, um, if you knock it out, you take two prize cards. Let's just look at the artwork. The artwork is fantastic for this. All the Green Ninja artworks are pretty good. It has 230 HP, obviously a Sage 2. Weakness to Grass, which is kind of harsh with Grass still running, ar running around a lot in the current meta. Greninja's Retreat cost is 2, which isn't bad. And yeah, I think that's all. It does, it is getting a rainbow rare and a, a full art. Okay, let's talk about Zyger GX. It's a basic mon that has 200 HP, which is fighting. 200 HP, which is not bad for a GX basic. Most of them we see them lying around 160 to 180 range as basics. Let's talk about the attacks. But also it can reach 240 with a Fighting Fury Bell. That's something I should have mentioned too. A cell Connector. Attach two Fighting Energy cards from your discard pile to this Pokemon. Now, the importance of this is if you start off with this first turn, that's a 50 damage, well, technically going second. But say you're going second on your first turn. That's an easy DCE up to 4 energies that turn, and if you have the choice ban and they have a GX Mana or an EX, that's a respectable 70 damage on your first turn. Or even 50 if they're just running a stage deck. Getting 50 damage on a, a basic Mon is really helpful out in the future. Lands Wrath, 130, 2 fighting, and 2 colorless energies. So that's easily 150 with... No, 160, my bad, with a choice ban. Now the GX attack, also two fighting, two colorless. 150 reaches 180 with a choice ban. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attack from Pokemon GX or EX during your opponent's next turn. Uh, and you can't use one or more GX during the game. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing about this card. They say you can't use the GX more than once. But with the help of Bonnie. Bonnie is a supporter that also comes from this set. You can play this card only if there is a stadium card in play. So you must have a stadium like Brooklet Hill, Parallel City, or Aether Paradise Conservation Center. 
if you have one of those cards in play, you can use this. Discard that stadium card. During your turn, Zygar GX can use its GX attack again, even if it's used it already that game. So pretty much it's going to be Bonnie and Zygarde, just flipping back and forth between Bonnie and Zygarde. Bonnie also gets a full art, which the full art is actually a pretty cute artwork, I will say. Also, Zygarde, if you guys didn't see, it has a normal card art, a full art card art, and a rainbow card art. Now, Ultra Necrozma, one of the figure faces for the set, like I was saying, it's sitting around 190, which isn't bad for a basic GX Mon. It's an Ultra Beast, and it's Dragon type. Photom Geyser. Discard all basic second energy cards from this Pokemon. This attack does 80 more damage for each card you discarded this way. So, it has a lot of reach with that attack. Just for two energies, that's 180. Just if you discard two energies. Which isn't bad for a two energy discard deck. With Malmar, which I will be talking about later, it makes this deck really efficient. Sky Scorching Light GX. You can use this attack only if the total of both player uh, players' remaining prize cards are six or less. Put six damage counters each of your opponent's Pokemon. So pretty much, if you and your opponent have six or less prize cards, you are able to put six damage counters all on their Mon. So if they have a full bench, that's 60 across the board. It's also like Tapu Koko the Baby Porn where it's 20 damage across the board. I like cards like this that can spread damage, but I don't think it's a worth using GX. But if, if you have stuff to clean up on the bench, that 60 damage does count. Every bit of damage does count. If I'm being honest here, I have no idea how to not pronounce this Pokemon's name. Leave it in the comment section below if you guys know the proper pronunciation. But I'm probably gonna butcher it. Naganail. It evolves from Poiple. It's a stage 1 sitting at 210, which isn't bad. Most stage 1 mons, GXs, sit around 210, 220, like Zork and Galissapod. It is an Ultra Beast. And it, for a bigger mon, it has only one reach across, which I really like, it is really nice. Let's get to the attacks. Beast Ride. This attack does 20 damage for each of your Ultra Beasts in play. So if you have a bench full, 20 times, my bad. If you have a bench full of Ultra Beasts, that's 100 damage. Well, 120 including that. It's kind of like Zygarde's attack. Not Zygarde, um, Zorak's first attack. Jet Needle, one Psychic and two Colorless Energies, one ten. This attack isn't affected by weakness or resistance, so it's just an uh, easy hitter that isn't we affected by weakness or resistance. Stinger GX is a really, it's really different, I'd say. Both players shuffle their prize cards in their deck, then each player puts the top three cards of their deck face down as a prize card. So if your opponent is one card away from winning the match, this is an easy reset button so you can play out the game a little bit longer. And say if you're not doing so good and you know your Guzma or something you need is in the prizes, you can easily use this to get a chance to put that back in your deck. It's a helpful way to put the cards that are in your prizes and that you are locked out of back into the cycle of your deck. So you can easily try to reach them again, or else if you're not lucky and just flunk out and they all go back into the prize cards. This card, as you see, has a rainbow artwork. It has a normal and a full art too. Okay, we are all done with all the GXs from the set, Forbidden Light, that are probably going to be higher on the get list and what we're going to see in the meta. I wanted to talk about some of the more basic mons, like prisms and basic mons that aren't really super special but are going to have places in the meta. Diancy Prism Star is going to be replacing Reggie Rock EX for the boost and it's only a one price take if it gets, does get knocked out. 
The bad part is, since it is a prison card, you can only run one of in your deck. But which is kind of good, so you don't have to try scrounging for four ofs and wasting a lot of money. It's only a one of, so it shouldn't be that high in demand. Even if it is, I don't see it going over $10. Uh, Diancy is a basic mod, obviously. It's fighting 120 HP and a 2 retreat cost, weak to grass. As long as this Pokemon is on your bench, your fighting Pokemon's attack does 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon before you apply weakness or resistance. Now, let's say you have one Diancy sitting on your bench with Zygarde out. That's automatically 70. 150 and 170 before you add anything else onto it. The 70 is reaching for basic mods. 150 is not going to get any current GXs that I can, can think about in the meta. And 170 will get like a Lele or something small out. So that's like one shotting a good thing. Good bit of things. It's just a nice support mod that fighting decks are love to see. It's probably going to be running Buzzwool, Zygarde obviously, Lucario, and um, what's that? Lycanroc. Now I love this mod that's about to come up. Malamar is what Psychic's been needing. I love Psychic. I run a Gengar deck every time I can. Malamar is going to be put in that Psychic deck. I can't wait for Mal I get my hands on a Malamar. Malamar is a stage 1 90 HP mon. It's psychic, obviously. Two retreat costs and sweep to psychic, obviously. Once during turn before you attach, you might attach one psychic energy from your discard pile to one of your bench mod Pokemon. Not to the active, it has to be on the bench. Which most psychic Pokemon in the Gengar deck I run or have for retreat cost. So that's good. It's a nice way, it's. It's how psychics are going to be more energy efficient. Right now, psychics are starting with energy efficiency, which is really bad. And you don't see most psychic decks in play. You see psychic support cards in most decks, so you don't see like a full-on psychic deck. Which I'm happy Malamar is going to be getting some good play with more uncommon decks. I hope Gengar is going to get up there. Um, not Decimating, but... The other Necrozmia may see some more play. And yeah. Now, those are all the Pokemon uh, I wanted to talk about right now. Uh, I'm now moving. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we are moving on to the trainers now, the set. The trainer supporters and Stadium. Okay, the first one we're talking about is B-String. B-String is going to be extremely good with the Ultra Space decks that are going to be coming out. It's an item card so you can run four of and you can use multiple once per turn. B-String. You can play this card only if your opponent has exactly three or four prize cards remaining. So watch your opponent's prize cards when you're playing with Ultra Space decks. Search your deck for up to two basic energy cards. Attach them to one of your Ultra Beasts, then shuffle them into your deck. Oh, my bad, then shuffle your deck. So pretty much, it's just a Posi 2 energy. Say if you have two of these bad boys in your hand, that's already four energies for any Ultra Beasts that you're running, like Ultra Necrozma. That's four energies. That's your one metal and three Psychics. Easy knockout for basic Pokemon right there. This is going to be a really good supporter, uh, I guess, yeah, item card for Ultra Space decks. It is also getting gold one that most people are going to be on the look after. This card isn't one of my favorites, but I've seen people talk about it, and I understand the hype around it. But I, it's one, it's a neg one compared to Ultra Ball. Mysterious Treasure. Discard a card from your hand. If you do, search your deck for a Psychic or Dragon Pokemon. Reveal it and put it in your hand, then shuffle your deck. Now, it's a great way to search out Evolutions or um, Ultra Necrozma or Psychic or just plain Dragon Mons that you will be running in your deck. I might even throw this in as a one-up for my Sungaleo deck because I run the 
Dragon Dialga. I know a Metal Dialga came out, but I don't want to deal with more Fire or Weakness right now. Next up is a trainer I hate to talk about because I hate this. I hate Fairy of a Passion. I'm sorry, I hate Fairy of a Passion. Diantha, the 6th gen champion. Diantha is a supporter, so I can use one per turn. You can play this card only if your fairy Pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn. So it's kind of like a teammate, it's where you got to search your deck for two cards. If a Pokemon of yours was previously knocked out the turn before, put two cards from your discard pile into your hand. So it's an easy way to get back, let's say, a rare candy that you need for your next Gardevoir, or a Sylveon you need for your Eevee, or if you're, you know, fairy stuff. This card is also getting a normal art, that's a full art right there, and yeah. That's all about Diantha. I actually missed silver one card. The one card that I'm I'm really hyped about is Metal Frying Pan. It's it's a dumb name. I love it. Uh, it's a tool. Attach to your, to one of your Pokemon if the if they already don't have a tool. Another trainer that I sadly skipped over was Metal Frying Pan. Metal Frying Pan is one of the cards that I'm personally looking forward to since I run a metal deck right now. The metal Pokemon this card is attached to takes 30 less damage in and from your opponent's attacks after you're playing weakness or resistance. And also that they have weakness. So all my metal mons have no longer have weakness. I don't know what I'm gonna move around in my deck for this, but I might have to drop a choice banner too. It may be worth it, it may not be, but I'm happy about this support card. It also comes in a gold edition. Uh, we already talked about that. We are now moving on to the stadium cards. There's only two of them. Lysander's Lab. Now, let me read this card and then I'll get into it. It's a stadium card. Both of you and your opponent have no effects. No, Pokemon tool cards. Blah, blah. Okay. Just show it rather. It's okay. Okay, we are done with the supporters and trainers. Now we're on to stadium cards. The first stadium I want to talk about is Lysander's Lab. Lysander's Lab, I'm going to go into detail more after this. After I read the card decks. Pokemon tool cards, so choice fan, metal frying fan. Float zone, both you and your opponents in play have no effects whatsoever. Now, the greatness and downside so, if they have choice bands, it's not adding on. The downside is with Garbodor, this does not affect Garbodor. It, Garbodor is, it says as long as it has a clip, it cannot have an effect, but it still works with Garbodor. So, Garbodor still shuts down your abilities. And this card does not get any card art. The other one is pretty much a Bricklet Hill for Ultra Beast. Ultra Space. Once during your turn, each player, the play, that player may search their deck for an Ultra Beast card reveal, put it in their hand, and then shuffle their deck afterwards. So pretty much you just get to search your deck for an Ultra Beast like Buzzwool, Nihilego. Purple, and then put them in your hand after uh, Shuffle your deck and then, you know, add them to your hand. Great seeding them search. It's kind of like the Brooklyn Hill for Ultra Beast. The specialty energy that's in the set that I'm going to be talking about is Beast Energy. Beast Energy Prism. It's a specialty energy. This provides colorless. While this card is attached to an Ultra Beast, it provides every type of energy, but only provides one energy at a time. This attack, the attack, blah blah. Okay. 
Okay, we're done talking about the trainer supporters and item cards. There's only one special energy set in this yeah, set that I'm going to be talking about. And that is Beast Energy Prism. This provides a colorless energy. While this card is attached to an Ultra Beast, it provides every type of energy, but provides only one energy at a time. The attack of the Ultra Beast, this card is... This is attached to does 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon before applying weakness or resistance. So applying this, it can count as a metal, psychic, whatever you want, but only provides one. And like it's kind of like rainbow energy in a sense, but it also does 30 more damage. So if we look back at Ultra Necrozma, you can technically count this as a psychic energy and discard it for the plus 30 more damage. That's just one example I can think of on the top of my head. So we're done with everything that I wanted to look at from the set, guys. Now, there's three cards that I mainly look forward to because I want to bring certain decks back and try to give them a try for fun. And that's Magma Zone. We already have a Metal Magma Zone, but this one's pretty much for Electric. It, the main thing I want to just talk about is the ability. As often as you like during your turn, before you attack, you may attach an Electric Energy card. From your hand to your Pokemon. So this is another another way to rile up Coco. I don't think there's any other good electric attackers that we have right now. But I want to try playing more electric. I always loved electric. Electric died back in black and white. I'm so sad. We need more electric Pokemon. Give us more electric mons. The next card is obviously Malamar. I want to bring Gengar back. I love Gengar. Creepshow Gengar is going to be my thing. I might even run Creepshow Gengar with um, Ultra, Ultra Necrozma because that's six damage counters. That's all you need. And then two energies for Gengar. That's all you need to do. And just like knock out every turn. So Malamar is going to be a big tech in my Gengar deck. And I'm a rarity ho. I just want this for my... Sungaleo deck. Energy Recycler. It comes in gold in this set. I want that gold energy recycler. But they need to update these card arts. We have more than those five energies now. Get us the ring with fairy and dragon on it. Please. But guys, that's all I wanted to do for this set. I do appreciate you guys watching this video. I'm going to start to try this. There are a few other videos that I'm going to be doing, like what decks are going to change in the meta, like Bustle, I'm going to add like, oh, this is going to be added, like Diancy and some other cards. Or with, hmm, trying to think of other, but like things that you should add to your deck with Forbidden Light coming out. And, or small changes like in Greninja, are you going to run the old Froki versus the new Froki? Or old Frogadier versus the new Frogadier? And I will try to do deck videos. I have some recorded from my stream, but I just haven't done anything with them. But I do appreciate you guys coming out. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Follow me on twitch.tv slash I will be doing giveaways for-